in the United States, in Miami. Willie Fords are getting ready to spend a dream weekend in their second home out of the ordinary. Real estate developer from father to son, these wealthy Americans own an exceptional property that only billionaires can usually afford. A private island in the Keys, a paradisical archipelago located in South Florida. To our second home, yes. We can just go there and be away from everything. <laughs> Escape reality. A Escape bit. reality. It's a little different when you're out there in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> it's like a it's like a cruise ship that doesn't move. They're off for a two-hour drive, heading to South Florida. The Keys Archipelago is a world apart. For nearly 200 kilometers, it consists of a succession of islands linked together by bridges and a road. What's going on, fellas? For this relaxing weekend, Westley, the youngest in the family, invited a dozen friends. After the car, you have to go to the sea. Another 10 minutes by boat to reach his private island. Leave the continent. We're going to our own country. It's called East Sisterog Island. Here is their little gem, a natural coral rock of 500 square meters, protected by an artificial lagoon. 40 meters in diameter with a pool and a single-story villa of 350 square meters. It's got everything a normal house has. We have our, our living room, we have our kitchen, we have our dining room. We usually have a dining room outside. We got our foosball table. Um, it's just like a normal house. We have internet, we have direct TV, you know, we, we got all that good stuff. The villa has three bedrooms that can accommodate up to eight people and offers high standard comfort. But the real luxury is that breathtaking view at 360 degrees over the Atlantic Ocean. Whatever side of the house you walk on, on you have a good view with the ocean sound. There's no other eye like this. I feel lucky. What's better than waking up in the middle of the Atlantic? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> In the Keys, Wesley and his family aren't the only ones who own a private island. There are dozens of them, like this 10-hectare piece of land with villas, the pool and golf courses, estimated at 85 million euros. Bob, Wesley's father, bought it at an auction 26 years ago for 600,000 euros. Today, it's worth 14 million. At the time, there was no running water or electricity. Thanks to tanks installed under the villa to recover rainwater and solar panels. Today he lives in total autonomy. This is the battery system that, that runs the whole house. Very simple system. Once it's in place, it lasts for many, many, many years and doesn't cost anything. Here, even for meals, it is possible to treat yourself to a feast for zero euros. Come on, come on, come on, it's a drive All right, should we try to catch some lobsters real quick? Don't take too much. Be respectful of the land. Yes. Appreciate what Mother Nature gives you. You take it out of the water, you eat it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the coral reefs of the Keys are protected because more than 6,000 species proliferate there. Fishing is authorized but highly regulated. Less than five minutes underwater, and Seth, Westley's friend, already came up with a very nice catch. <laughs> the tail, 48 inches, or roughly. Seth is going to catch four specimens like this one in under 15 minutes. Like in a pond, this mother of abundance makes the keys a unique archipelago of its kind. It's the end of the day. Wesley and friends are enjoying the pool and the beautiful sunset by being aware of being ultra-privileged. Look where we are. Yes, I know. Amazing where we are. I do feel like I feel blessed. 
blessed to, to have a place like this in my life, <laughs> especially with people like this to enjoy it with. This exoticism and this sweetness of life will make Keys one of the favorite vacation destinations of Americans. Located south of Miami, between the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean, the Keys have 1,700 islands, a unique decor with very preserved places and others that are more urbanized. Nearly 80,000 inhabitants live there year-round. To the north, Key Largo is the largest island. At the other end, Key West is the most populated and also the most festive, with its lively streets and its numerous bars. Prized for its tropical climate, between 20 and 30 degrees all year round. The archipelago attracts 3 million tourists a year. It is a must-see destination for diving enthusiasts and sport fishing. We have dinner. <laughs> Known all over the world thanks to the writer Ernest Hemingway, who lived in this colonial house at the beginning of the 20th century, these islands have also become the home of numerous artists. They lead an unconventional life there. Because here, far from the mainland, everything is allowed, especially during the Fantasies Fest. It is a unique festival of its kind, which brings together every year thousands of nudists between float parades, costume contests, and wild parties. The Americans are coming to give in. But not everyone likes these extravagances. The Keys are also victims of their success. Real estate prices are twice as high than in the rest of the United States. Today, the poorest have the right to work there, but they can't live there anymore. This is the case of Jose Guevara, expelled from his home he no longer knows where to sleep. Este paraíso no es para pobres. Este, este paraíso está lo están construyendo para gente de millonarios. Like him, many residents find themselves on the street, so they organize themselves to survive. I made this. Everything. Air conditioner. Sun, parties, and alternative cultures. Welcome to the Florida Keys. Out of the ordinary islands in the southeastern United States. Once a haven for fishermen and smugglers, the Keys have become a vacation destination for wealthy Americans. Ten years ago, Howard Livingston lived in the northern United States, but this multimillionaire fell in love with the archipelago during a trip, and he left everything to settle there. It's sunny, beautiful, warm, every single day. It's, it's uh, you know, vacation every day. <laughs> so that's, uh, that makes me smile. <laughs> it is nine in the morning. How we doing, team? His day starts with a fishing trip with his neighbor Jim and Dean, their assistant. Well, we're gonna go out to the, uh, to the reef, which is about five miles. On board their state-of-the-art boat, let's go for three hours of open sea trip. With 750 horsepower under the hood, the engines propel the racing car at more than 90 kilometers per hour. Ocean Highway, yeah. <laughs> Howard is not shying away from his fun. Fishing is his passion. Here, it is served. More than a sporting activity in the Keys, it is a real institution. This is the fishing capital of the world. Everybody comes from all over the world to fish here. It might be a reason. Yeah, it might be a reason, yeah. <laughs> it's a good place. Unfortunately for them, they are not alone in the sector. Whoa, shark just got him or something. <laughs> <laughs> the richness of the marine fauna attracts towards the lagoon, the biggest predators like this nurse shark. We had a fish on, the shark 
came and ate the fish. Some days the sharks are so bad we can't get a fish to the boat. Oh yeah? They take every fish, yep. Despite competition from the sharks, Howard hits the jackpot, a yellow-tailed snapper. Oh yeah. It's an iconic Keys fish, known for its delicious meat. We're doing well. We're not catching a lot, but we're catching balls. Yeah. When he lived in the north of the country, Howard was the boss of a spare parts company in the automotive sector. It had 250 employees. Tired of his office life, he decided to sell everything to settle in this tropical paradise. This is probably as far as I, you could ever get from my life before because I lived in Chicago, you know, fast-paced, uh, just busy, 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 a lot of people, a uh, lot of stress. Here, no stress. Good, how you doing today? Good to see you. That's what seduced him. It's this life in the rhythm of water. In the Keys, people travel mainly by boat. This is like Venice. These are all canals. You, you can see by the number of boats, everyone here has a boat. You can go anywhere you want to go and do whatever you want to do on this island on a boat. Many people have one car in the family and they'll have three boats. In the archipelago, the largest island is only 2.5 kilometers wide. It is half of the Eau de Ray in France. All those that are inhabited are built on the same model a main road and adjacent streets that concentrate shops. All around residential neighborhoods, as far as the eye can see, where villas can cost millions of euros. This is the most expensive street on our island. They're big houses, big property, uh, and they're on the open ocean. So this is a very, uh, very sought after location, this street. A house like this probably $3 million. With the fortune he amassed in Chicago, Howard bought this luxury villa of 700 square meters, estimated at over 1 million euros, with pool and private access to the sea. We're all set. That's my garage. <laughs> Inside, three floors. With a breathtaking view of the ocean, This is my paradise. This is uh, everything I've ever wanted in my life is right here, right on the, this little island. I love it. We are far from his former life as a business manager. Here's what it looked like at the time. These are my new suits. T-shirts, shorts, and instead of a tie, I have shells around my neck. So this is the new me. There is also an end to his daily routine between his offices and his home. Today, the multimillionaire no longer needs to work. As a result, he devoted himself to his second passion, music. <laughs> this is way more fun. So this is what I do now. And this is my, uh, this is my little workspace, my little studio. The businessman became a songwriter, accompanied by Cindy, his wife, who fulfills the role of manager. Every week, he gives shows in local bars. And in the Keys, Howard is now a small star. Like him, many great fortunes come and go a golden retreat on these islands. It's not just the sun and the sea that attracts them. In Key West, the farthest island from the mainland, all excesses and insanity are allowed. Moreover, the tourist season starts with a totally extravagant festival. The Fantasy Fest. For a week, the city lives at the rhythm of charters parades and costume contests. It has also become a nudist rendezvous. Here, far from Puritan America, they come every year parading in the middle of the street. You see more tits and pussy in one day than you see the whole year, by far. <laughs> this is the adult Disney world. The goal of the game is to get laid. No, I'm just kidding. It's just to meet people and have fun and to give them positive energy. 
Most people cover their bodies with body makeup. It's the big trend. Some have even specialized in breasts. Tango owns this small stand attached to a bar from Main Street in Key West. With his associates, he chains customers. In the stand next door, Mukita, 64, came to get drawn a red corset on the upper body. She wants to look like a sexy Santa Claus. The session lasts about 15 minutes. It costs 47 euros for the chest and up to 130 euros for an integral look. It's not cheap, but Wukita loves her new paint suit is very successful. Tyler, his companion of 15 years younger, is also under the spell. The couple is coming from Texas. Tyner is a sports coach. Mukita is a real estate agent. They have done more than 2,000 kilometers of road to participate in this festival. With one of their friends, Johan, real estate agent as well. As fans of nudism, they brought dozens of accessories with them. Because here, there is a rule to respect, and that's why that nudists have their bodies painted. It is forbidden to go completely naked on the street. You have to cover your genitals. It's the law. So the three friends have to be cunning. I might just go back to my if you could just put a dot. Of spray paint right, right on your nipple. Yeah. And then it's okay. But if it was a bare nipple, it's not okay. And um, it, no it doesn't make sense. In the event of a violation, the fine can reach 900 euros. So, the three friends are racking their brains to be as naked as possible, in order to get noticed while respecting the law. I'm trying to be a candy cane. Come oh, on, you gotta feel it. Where, what are we missing? Huh? I mean, what are we looking for? Sexier, more yeah. risque? For example, if we could do something like... I, I think that was awesome. You wanna be more charismatic? an expression and not have something that anybody else yeah, has, nice, you know? Yeah. Because people always, they come up to you and they let you know, like, you know, if I'm dancing with a girl and I'm like, you know, <laughs> and I've got her over my head and it's just sexy and it's erotic. Ho, ho, ho! Here we come! Tyler has been practicing this form of nudism for nearly 10 years. As for many Americans who lead busy working lives, it's an outlet for him. In the middle of tourists and food stalls, with his athletic body, the fitness pro is a real eye catcher. And that's why he likes to parade like a star on the red carpet. In this crazy atmosphere, say goodbye to complexes and taboos. Even married women are looking for contact. I love him. Who does not want to love that? She's just a very friendly girl. Oh, that's nice. Oh. 
In Eve's outfit in the middle of the street, most nudists feel like they're growing wings. And it is this freedom that they come looking for, like their friend Dana, a teacher in the north of the country. I actually made this for our lake. No way. We throw beads. Every year for the past seven years, she has returned with her husband to rediscover that you know, feeling. It's funny because my husband always says, you're so shy everywhere else. And then you get down there and anything else. I think it's just the atmosphere. Everybody's here to have a good time. Being free and naked with, and just being able to be yourself without any judgment whatsoever is just the most incredible feeling. And to be widely accepted like we are here, it's amazing. But in Key West, not everyone joins to the ideas of Tyler and his friends. Further north, on a beach, it's a different atmosphere. Come on, we'll pray. God, we just pray, Lord God, that your name be lifted up. Jesus' name out here. You draw sinners to repentance. Adam LaCroix and his small group of evangelical preachers have made theist fantasy their pet peeve. At 39, this construction worker is a retired drug addict and drug dealer. For him, Key West nudists are lost sheep that must be brought back to the right path. But see, we're separated from God by our sin. For if you live after the flesh, you will die. Don't you understand what it does to you? These are things that will take you to the lake of fire forever and ever. People that go to Key West are sinful. And uh, we actually witnessed someone having sex up on a balcony a couple years ago. And you know, the Bible calls that lewdness. And uh, you know, all the, kid, the kids see it. It's funny because a lot of people bring their kids to this event and they don't realize that there's a lot of uh, things like, uh, you know, uh, molestation and uh, pedophilia and these things. This is, this is what can happen. On this beach, the evangelist show is not really the attraction you've been dreaming of, even if some tourists share their ideas, like this young couple. A lot of nudity and saying a lot of a lot of alcohol and drinking, a lot of Satan down here on this beach. If you want to be clean and you want to do the right thing, here is not the way to be. But very quickly, many holiday makers show their dissatisfaction, and some do not hesitate to contact us. Sam, 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 when are you going to wake up? Do you not believe? Do you not believe in the resurrection power of God? The new kingdom? I'm offended because that's really loud. Okay. And it hurts my ears. Okay. I cannot but speak the things which I Despite the protests, Adam does not intend to stop there. He planned to continue his sermons after nightfall, right in the heart of the festival. It is 10 p.m. Downtown Key West has taken a serious heat stroke. In addition to nudity, alcohol is added and festival goers are going wild. Amid the crowd, Tyler and his friends are having a blast. The atmosphere is turning into libertinism. For evangelists, it is a true vision of hell. Adam LaCroix continues his fight, but facing the tipsy festival gores, it is not that simple. The Bible says, because his works were evil and his brothers were right. There's coming a day. God will execute. He will execute, it says, and fill the places with dead bodies. Dead bodies. Everyone thinks, you know, when they're doing that, it's fine that you're free. But ultimately, they understand it comes that you're enslaved to sin. And this is not really enjoyment. There's a lot of sadness. The invasion of evangelists in full celebration is starting to annoy customers in the surrounding bars. Excited, a bar owner, that man at the center, with his wig and his brown shirt, decide to use the hard way. While the evangelist has his back turned, he cuts off the microphone cable with his knife. for the greatest happiness of its customers. 
In the United States, there are no restrictions to freedom of expression, a guaranteed right by the First Amendment to the Constitution. So when the police show up, it's difficult for the traitor to justify his action. The owner of the bar will be summoned to the Court of Justice a few days later. He faces a big fine. Despite this altercation, Adam LaCroix is determined to continue his fight, even though on the island he is unlikely to be heard. In Key West, this wind of freedom is nothing new. This is partly due to the gay community, which has been very established here for decades. Welcome to Key West. Especially in the 80s. At the time, the world discovered the AIDS epidemic. Homosexuals are stigmatized, but in the remote Keys, they can live without hiding. The Fantasy Fest, created to boost tourism, is then used to raise funds and fight against this new disease. Even today, members of the community gay people remain very involved in the festival. A stone's throw from the city center, Daniel Bittnard is getting ready for the big parade which concludes the festivities. Tens of thousands of tourists are expected. On this occasion, a costume competition is organized and Daniel is hoping to win it. And this has to be really quick. Time, time is gold in Fantasy Fest. At 57, this key figure in the gay community is the manager of a vacation home. He took a week off to participate in this competition. With Gary, a bartender friend, he has been working there for a year. This is my costume, yeah. This is a casino roulette, and um, physically, I'm gonna be in the center it spins, so the ball will spin and eventually will fall in one box, and that's the winner. That's the idea. 15 kilos of fabric and foam for a diameter of three and a half meters. With this very cumbersome costume, Daniel hopes to make a big impression. You think you're gonna be the king of the, the parade, like this? I don't know, I don't know, that will be a surprise. Right, close to it. If Daniel puts so much heart into the work, it's not just for fun. Like most of his friends, he experienced the dark times. Years of AIDS on the island. So for him, participating in this festival is also a commitment. Very devastating, very, very devastating for the people of Key West, because nobody knew what was going on. And it was like the new disease that, you know, only will attack gay people. And, uh, of course, everybody was just dying because we had no solution for that. Sandy bringing it over. This She's year, the organizers the raised over 300,000 euros, funds that will be used to finance research oh, against AIDS and against other serious diseases. A source of pride for Daniel. It is 6 p.m. The manager is putting the finishing touches to his disguise. That's rock. <laughs> That's rock. In the game of the best disguise, Daniel leaves with a serious advantage. In 10 years, he won the prize several times. This year, for the picture to be complete, his friends will accompany him throughout the parade, disguised as a croupier. This has to remain together. A more delicate operation than expected. Dan, can you open that gate, please? <laughs> Why, come over here. How are you? Good, buddy. How are you doing? Good, good. good. I'm going to lay it in the ground here. Here? Right? Uh-huh. It didn't break. <laughs> it's time for a three-hour walk on the streets of Key West. Barely out of his house with his roulette, Daniel is having a small effect.
Thank you. <laughs> this is the fun of it. This is what I enjoy. This is my Christmas. The biggest reward is to see in the people's face a big smile and a wow, more than any money or any check or any prize that I can win. This is fantastic. That's why I call it Christmas. <laughs> Daniel would still like to leave with a trophy, but faced with even more eccentric competitors. Bye, guys. The challenge is daunting. Cartoon heroes. Dragons. Sweets or even more or less dressed creatures. All of them are imaginative. It's the spirit of Key West because everybody uh, creates, they fantasize, they put their hidden secrets out, and nobody will judge you. At nightfall, shorts come in. It's the fateful moment for Daniel. In these stands, an anonymous jury assigns scores to each participant. The manager gives everything. He hopes to win the award for best costume. This evening, Daniel will have to settle for a consolation prize. The prize for the best costume is finally awarded to these people in Key West, disguised as candy. The manager only wins the award for the best choreography. Nothing to start his good mood. Daniel intends to take his revenge next year to support this festival that is dear to him. Every year, thanks to fantasy fests, the Keys' turnover explodes. Between hotels, bars, and shops of all kinds, the revenues amount to more than 45 million euros. This financial windfall has a downside. The influx of tourists to the archipelago is driving up the price of real estate. In the center of Key West, the square meter is around 10,000 euros. That's twice as expensive as the country's average. As a result, modest workers no longer arrive to find decent housing. Jose Rivera finds himself in this situation. Originally from Nicaragua, he arrived in the Keys at the beginning of the 2000s, and he went on a series of odd jobs as a laborer or a gardener. I had to do it all day, because that's a tough property. I had to take care of the next one, and I have another one in uh, Summerland. I said two more in Summerland and uh, one more and uh, two more over there around us, right here. On average, these works earn him a little more than 1,700 euros per month. A decent income to live in the United States, but in the Keys, that's not enough. People come in this country, think, uh, no, I got you say, think that the money is in the, hanging in the tree. It's not, man. Nothing is sure. That's, uh, that's like a, a fortunate today, tomorrow you never know. For the past three years, Jose has lived in an occupied campsite, mainly by self-employed workers like him. He installed this fortunate mobile home and only pays 800 euros per month for the location. A good plan but the campsite has been sold to a real estate developer. He wants to have luxury hotels and villas built there for wealthy tourists. Jose must leave with no alternative. I am moving my furniture. I have been ordered to leave the premises. Here is the document that the court sent us. I have 10 days to leave. Once the deadline passed, he kicked me out. Jose tried to find another place to stay, 
but in the Keys, they are all beyond his means. Okay. He owns this trailer in which he can pile up all his stuff. Impossible to move this mobile home that cost him over 30,000 euros. Since I worked during the day, I come here to do the work at night. Everything I had is here. There's not much left, but it's all there. For the gardener, it's a big blow. At 41, he has to start all over again. This paradise is not made for the poor. It has become a paradise for millionaires. Jose is not the only one in this situation. The campsite is home to about 50 families. They all received the same eviction notice. A stone's throw from the mobile home of Jose lives Santa Cadix. She no longer sleeps at night. At 45, she works as a cleaner in vacation homes and has lived here for three years with two young children. Despite her numerous searches, she also did not find another affordable place to live. Nobody is helping us. It's easy to say, leave, but we don't know where to go. We don't have the means to find other accommodations. It is not normal. Maybe all is not lost. Jose has made multiple requests to the authorities to no avail. Tonight, he has one last card left to play. He learned the real estate developer's lawyer was attending a public meeting with the mayor of Key West at the county seat. It is the equivalent of the general council in France, so he decided to go there to plead his case. opportunities, you mean another mayor, you don't know about this case, another county commissioner, you don't know about the situation, and we have to, you know, to, to put a, a, to this company talking about that situation. It's his last chance. Jose knows that, in front of him, the real estate developer's lawyer won't give him a gift. It's that man in the blue tie. Will the gardener manage to avoid expulsion? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm representing the community. This gentleman is uh, Mr. Barton. He lied on last time. He said, I want to meet in the family to find a solution for the family. You never do that. Nobody came in. It, the company came to remove the public life of the families. Nobody controlled this company. It is the turn to speak of the real estate developer's lawyer. Jose fears the worst. And I'll try to walk through and answer the question. I am pushing at, as hard as possible to get every person there to sit down and see what we can do to accommodate it. That has basically been a no man's land. The sheriff's office has been public in the paper about all these criminal type activities that have occurred over time on the property. So the arguments are shocking and unfortunately for Jose, the mayor and his administration have no solution to offer him. I think my time is gone. Your time is up, yes. You have to understand, too, that the man owns that land. I can't get you out of this mess. You do need an attorney, though, if you're going to fight it or not. I want to say sorry because I use the word. I represent a community, and you represent the community. Sorry about that. Jose is bitter because, unlike his opponent, he can't afford a good lawyer. It is an inadmissibility and a victory for the real estate developer. When you're trying to develop affordable housing, you have to go through a process, and sometimes people have disagreements. All right, okay, I gotta go. For Jose, it's the descent into hell. With no housing, he has to live in his construction trailer. I'm sleeping here, I sit in here, I'm watching my phone. Everything I have is right here. I don't have a choice. That's everything I have. Leaving Nicaragua nearly 15 years ago, Jose was full of hope. Today, even if he does odd jobs, he's seriously thinking about leaving the keys.
I had to find my way because uh, I can't continue living like that, you know? It's very hard. There's a situation push you, like I say, okay, that's time to go back to your country, go back to your home. Like Jose in the Archipelago, more and more working poor are victims of this real estate boom. So, some got organized. A few hundred meters from Key West Yacht, in one of the beautiful and the most touristic of the Archipelago, an island still in the wild is the subject of all rumors. It's called Wisteria Island. There are no bridges or millionaire villas here. Incredible as it may seem, it has been abandoned for years. In fact, this island has never been able to be exploited because it is at the heart of a long legal battle between private owners, local authorities, and the federal government, all of whom claim ownership of it. Taking advantage of this legal imbroglio, homeless people got hold of it. Among them was Jeep Calloway. At 70, he is the oldest of the island. And, uh, he lives in this makeshift camp a with a handful of friends. <laughs> Yeah. I'm the sheriff. <laughs> She's the CIA. I need my star. Yeah, that's what I need. Arriving in the Keys 40 years ago, Jeep originally lived on a boat. Three years ago, a hurricane swept everything away. And this is where they are. So he settled here. I made this. Everything. Five gallon buckets. There's five there's a thousand gallons of rock here. Leveled it up so it's all level. About a month ago, I put this one up. This is new. They last about a year. Even though it lives like a Robinson, Jeep wants to stay comfortable. So he got it all planned out. A gas stove for the kitchen. A room with a tent, which he uses as a closet to store all his things. No mosquitoes. There is also one for friends who are visiting. I don't rent them, they're free. This is for my, for, my, for my guests, for my friends. To have electricity, Jip installed solar panels. I have 200 watt solar panels, and I've got big batteries. And even a generator that runs on gasoline in case of heavy consumption. This installation allows it to power a whole bunch of electrical appliances, like his tablet and his television. Even if he's cut off from the world, he wants to stay connected and lead an almost ordinary life. I can drink muddy water, sleep in a hollow log, or I can live good. What do you choose? When it arrived in the Keys, Jeep was hoping to succeed in music. This city didn't choose him, but he got used to it eventually. Today, he is proud of it. Well, I love living here. I'm good. That's my front yard. Like a foot in the nose, its beach is right in front of of the most popular islands in the Keys. Each night in a hotel costs 600 euros. It would even be home to a national celebrity. Oprah. Oprah? Yeah. Super, super famous. Ah, Oprah wins the... Uh... Winfrey. Where's she TV doing? show, right there. She's one of the TV presenters, the best known in the United States, a proximity that amuses the castaway. Sometimes? Sometimes. Yeah. Hey. In recent years, thanks to its inhabitants, this island has become a real curiosity, and it also attracts tourists. Oh, Jared, it's, so it's afternoon. 
This Key West resident is showing off the island to his friend who arrives from Chicago in the northern United States. The 30-year-old vacationing in the Keys absolutely wanted to see it with his own eyes. He's taking a video of the greatest place I've ever seen before. I never experienced this. It's crazy how people can live here. It's complete freedom out here. You know what I mean? You don't there's nothing going on out here but positive good things. So like, you know, everybody's fighting over money in Key West. We're out here. They're like building osprey towers and doing awesome stuff for nature and kids living how kids need to be living. The island also welcomes cash-strapped tourists who take advantage of this amazing place without paying one cent. Like a friend and his daughter Lydia in the middle of the sea, she comes from Kentucky, a state located in the east of the United States. Without this island, this single unemployed mother, he could never have given this luxury to his daughter. I can work in town, not pay rent. <laughs> it's the only way I could do this, be here. It's way better than being a hobo on shore. <laughs> To survive on their island and earn enough to eat, Jeep and his friends still have to go to Key West on a regular basis. Several times a week, the Dean of the Robinsons and performs street shows. Okay, you got me down a good tight? Magic tricks. Okay, folks. I don't know exactly what's happening here, but uh, hey, what you doing? And a ventriloquism show. Hey. Trying to figure out how to make money. Hey, lady. To entertain lady. tourists, Jeep spares no effort, but today it has competition and it is difficult to captivate spectators. Very hard. So I'm going to try to get one more show off. One more quick show, folks! Hey! Fortunately, the street artist can rely on his faithful companion, a dog that he trained himself. In less than five minutes, the crowd was won over. In total, Jeep has amassed just over 120 euros. Come on, give it to the dog. Come on, give it to the dog. That's okay. Don't we give it to you. That's all right. A good recipe and something to go back to your island with some provisions for the party. Vagabonds, tourists, locals, everyone gathers around the campfire. And guitars. It's like that almost every night. Wisteria Island has a hippie atmosphere against the tide of American consumer society. This alternative culture is gaining more and more followers because a very worrying new danger threatens the keys. Today, these paradisiacal islands are on hold. Tourists, partygoers, misfits, and millionaires, perhaps their last happy years, are living there. Because of pollution, it is gradually destroying the 300-kilometer-long coral reef which protects the archipelago from erosion. As a result, a third of these beaches are now at risk. The phenomenon is exacerbated by global warming and the increasingly devastating hurricanes that affect the region. Faced with this predicted disaster, scientists are sounding the alarm like Dan Berderno, a 28-year-old young oceanographer. If we lose the reefs, we won't have any defense against any of that kind of uh, wave energy. In 50 years, this whole neighborhood will, will be underwater. And it's kind of a really scary thought to even think about what would happen if we don't have coral reefs. With the emergency, the young scientist decided to take action. With his team, he has developed a revolutionary process to grow coral on a large scale and maybe save the barrier. 
This is the, the coral tree that is floating in the water column in about 15 feet of water, and that lets all the corals hanging on it have um, excellent access to nutrients and sunlight as well as space to grow. And so they really, really love hanging on these, these trees. It may seem rudimentary, but this brilliant system has been copied all over the world because coral is hard to grow. That's good. Five kilometers from the coast, an underwater livestock farm. 6,000 square meters of coral, a real artificial forest. The scientist dips here every day to monitor growth of its 40,000 grafts. This is the first phase of the rescue operation. Then, the grafts must be transplanted onto the reef to consolidate the barrier. This is a living colonial animal. They take in um, calcium from the water, and then basically via their, um, their growth process, they lay down a, um, a matrix of stone and, and start building up and up on top of each other is what you get, like the reef crest, okay. and, and that creates the shape of the reef itself. In 10 years, Dan and his colleagues have already carried out more than 80,000 hand grafts on 20 sites. In this way, they hope to be able to completely restore the barrier. This is a decline that's been going on for 20 or 30 years in the Keys. And that, you know, every year it's gotten worse and worse. And so we're trying to reverse something that's been happening for 20 years. And that takes a long time. Everyone here is on a mission. Everyone. You know, the oceans are their passion, and the oceans are in big, big trouble right now. Um, so if we don't do something now, it might be too late. Dan and his team don't know if they will reach the end of the mission, but they are determined to fight. On an ocean scale, it's a drop of water. But for the Florida Keys and their inhabitants, a note of hope for this tropical paradise is still one of the destinations for a long time, America's favorite vacation.